All right, so I'm gonna attach this haul video to the picking video, which I don't do a lot of times, but I think I can keep it reasonably short. Not super short, but reasonably. Um, yeah, I wasn't feeling it today. <laughs> I was in a mood. Um, and one thing about these like country yard cells or like small town yard cells is everyone knows everyone. There's not a lot of ways to advertise it because they, they don't even usually have a lot of Facebook groups or anything like that. Most of the time it's advertised in their local newspaper, which is all of like six pages. Um, or it's just word of mouth. So when they put up signs, they rarely actually lead you to the house. And they'll put the address on there, but you can't usually see that from the road easily. And you end up just sort of driving all over the place trying to figure out where things are. Uh, so unless you live in the area and can read the address, it just, it becomes a thing. Uh, because also, like, you don't typically have phone service out there either. A lot of the, especially farther out. <clears throat> so there's a lot of extra driving really the last two days. I took some video yesterday, but um, it there wasn't anything special. I found some things, but nothing like really worth mentioning. So I ended up just deleting that because I am like eight videos behind posting. Um, so we just started again today and it was just, it was just, it was, I was in a mood. Um, Really, I probably should have given myself like a solid two or three days of just decompressing and taking a break. Um, maybe list like eight to ten items a day just to keep my algorithms up, but just completely staying away from reselling for a couple days. Because I've been going seven days a week for a while now. And then in the last week and a half, I've done an enormous amount of work, like listed probably over 700 items at this point. And I've done a lot of organizing. I've been shipping six days a week. I've been making a lot of videos. I've been doing a lot of social media. I've been going out like driving and picking and I've, I've been picking seven days a week because even on Sundays I'll go in and try to do trash picking or even just run into Goodwill. Some days I go to the Goodwill two and three days like I'm getting my steps in. Um, and on top of that, there's all this, like, life stress going on, you know? Like, just, you know, with, uh, with everything. So, I, uh, probably it would have been smart to be kind to myself and give myself a two to three day break. But that's just not in my nature. So, <laughs> I guess it's something I still need to work on. Um, I am, however... I did decide because one thing that has rarely ever happened with me is I get to where I just don't want to go picking. I love the adventure of picking, not just finding treasures, but like hearing people's stories and meeting people and traveling back roads and seeing things and stopping in some shack of a place and eating lunch. Like I love it. I look forward to it, especially in the spring through the fall when it's warmer and every weekend it's like I get this boost of adrenaline. Rarely ever have I gotten to the point where I just want to go home. And today was one of those days. So if I'm at that point, especially with all the momentum I've gotten, I don't want to I don't want to crash and burn. And I think I'm very close to that. So I decided, which is weird too, like all the listing I've done in the last week and a half, which is a lot. My brain keeps wanting to just list now because I've made so much progress that it's like, hey, let's list again, let's list again, let's list again. And I think I need to take advantage of that, one. And two, if that's where I am, that's where my energy and my mental and emotional peace of mind is at right now, then maybe I just need to follow with that because I have plenty of inventory. Like... I did a really good job of building up my inventory again over the last few months. My goal was to get to where I steadily built up to 2,000 items, and I'm there. Like, I have over a 1,000 listed, and I have probably a solid 1,000 items to list. I will only probably list about 700 of those because I always keep 
at least a 10 day back stock of inventory in case I get sick or I can't go picking for some reason or my car breaks down or I break a leg or emergency comes up. Because if I'm listing 30 items a day even, which isn't as high as I've gone before, having 300 extra items only gives me a 10 day window. So, I mean, you could basically have the flu, a bad case of the flu for 10 days. So I do keep a back stock of inventory. Um, so I probably will list about 700 more of those items and I'll probably work on that. The next, tomorrow's is Sunday and then Monday and Tuesday it's supposed to rain anyways. So I think what I'm going to do is take that Sunday, Monday and Tuesday and I'm just not even going to go picking. If I get sort of squirrely sitting in the house, I might go run into Goodwill, but if I do, I'll only be looking for like very high end or high value items or maybe like a toy bin because those are fun. But I am definitely getting burnt out on the picking and that is what brings me joy in this job. <laughs> so I don't want to do that. Uh, but anyways, so we will go, we'll start with the first yard sale that I went to. Um, it was another thing about small towns is like there were no yard sale signs yesterday. There was no inkling that there was ever even going to be a yard sale. And then there ended up being three in my town. And then I went over to the next town and went to like another three. Um, so it can change like literally overnight. Um, the first one I went to was maybe like three miles from here. And I got there fairly early. I think it was like 8.15 or so. Um, but it was pretty busy when I got there. I did still find some decent things. I did get these uh, DC. I think there's DC. Uh, maybe they're all DC. I thought there was a Marvel. No, there's some Marvel too. But they're the like comic book books. I think they call them graphic novels. Um, some are paperbacks. Some are hardback they're all in really good condition two of them go for more like this one is like a 15 to 20 dollar one and this is like a 30 to 35 dollar one so those will get listed by themselves the rest of these are probably like a five to eight dollar range somewhere in there green lantern we got now we're into the marvel we got thor another Thor. I might do like a Thor lot to really maximize my money. Um, we got another DC Superman and then we got Marvel Fantastic Four. One way or another these will get lotted up together and I could probably get somewhere around like 40 to 50 dollars if I lot them up. So that turned out to be pretty good because she charged me about a dollar a piece for them. Um, so more than likely I'll get somewhere around a hundred dollars for all of them. So it was like 10 into a hundred. And these are just really easy to list because you just scan the barcode and then do a similar listing. Um, and then they're, they ship media mail and they don't break. You do want to still waterproof them and you want to put something around them because media mail can get rough because they're mostly books and they will just throw books around. So even just a piece of like thin cardboard or something uh, after you waterproof it one way or another. You can either take a baggie or like a, what are they called? The little thin mailer things. Or I also have a saran wrap that I'll wrap around something sometimes. Like if like, if I do a lot of books, I'll actually secure them all together with the saran wrap and then put something else over it. Um, but always waterproof your books because they will get left out in the rain. If they're getting shipped somewhere like inner city, like New York or something, like, things get left in the rain a lot, especially in the northeastern region of the country. Um, so waterproof them. I got those there. What else did I get? Oh, I got this for myself. Because <laughs> I'm a huge screen fan. Some of these do really well on eBay. Like the 90s ones. And then even some of the more current ones that are like rare. But this is the one that like... You, you pump... Okay, I get the line clear here. 
and it like, you know, good old creepy Halloween fun. But in this neighborhood, Halloween is like a huge ordeal. Um, and my parents will be back towards the beginning of fall. <clears throat> they did not get to do Halloween last year because that's when my mom started not feeling well. So we are going to try to live it up this Halloween and I need a costume and I love Scream and that was a dollar. So I went ahead and got that and I'll probably save it after that because that will probably gain value over the years. Um, I also got all of these for a dollar, which this grouping, they're vintage handkerchiefs and they got all kinds of different little embellishments. Some of them are like a floral print. I mean, some of them are really pretty. Um, but yeah, some of them just have like the knit edging, as they call it. Uh, but yeah, there's a, a good number here that I will lock together for probably like maybe 20 bucks at most. These don't bring a lot of money unless they're really iconic or something uh and even then they don't bring loads of money uh but there were three others that i will sell by themselves we got uh the cat and the fiddle cow jumping over the moon um it does have like the design designer on here and then we got Pokey the dog, the puppy, which is super cute. I think they're all golden book. Those are, those both are golden book. And then we got a, like a mid-century Christmas one. And that one does have a couple spots, but like these will go somewhere between seven and ten dollars a piece, like nothing crazy but for a dollar they're very easy to list and ship and really I mean I could probably get about 40 bucks or so for all of them together so that's a good profit and then I don't think I got anything else of that one I went down the road to another one that was in my neighborhood and I got this. This is actually probably just going to be for my daughter. I could probably sell these, this, because some of these do all right, like maybe $15 to $20. They came up with a bunch of these sort of retro designs, and they had, like, horror themes, like Exorcist and, you know, the cult and different things. Um, I think it's Stephen Rhodes. But this one's pretty cool. It's got a, my daughter loves animals, but this is all, like, the spooky, and it says black and magic animal rescue um and i think that's sort of her color scheme too so that's gonna go to her for a dollar uh then i ended up hitting the road i think about that point in time and then i went all the way out it was probably like a 20 minute drive to the next town and the first one, I knew where it was because it was in a church parking lot. And this one kind of set the tone. Like, I was okay. Like, I wasn't feeling great about going out and picking. But I was okay until I got to this one. And I showed up. And right as I, like, walk up, I hear a guy calling someone and saying, Yeah, did you, were you sure you told this guy, like, all the Atari stuff for $5? And I was just like, what? <laughs> So he got like a console. It wasn't in the best condition, but even for parts, those things do all right. He got a console and probably like eight games and like four controllers and one of the like little Pong tennis controllers, all of it for five bucks. And, you know, I decided I'm just gonna be happy for him. That's a good deal. Good job, dude. Um, and so then I walk over and I, I see these like 90s button up shirts, like with the dragons and stuff, like late 90s sort of rave wear. And rave wear is coming back. Um, and it's going to come back from my predictions, like very hardcore. So I would say over the next like six months to a year at most. So I was thinking I would get them 
and I would like just sort of list them up a little bit higher um, because I did end up looking when I got home. Those, that type of shirt, there's only like about 1,700 listed and there's like almost 400 that have sold in the last three months, which that is a pretty good turnover rate when you take in consideration the particular style. That typically means that it's trending upwards when you see that like large number of a very specific style, not even brand, but a style where it's starting to almost pace up with like the supply and demand is like almost equalizing. So I would imagine that soon it'll get hard to find those um, because they also tend to have condition issues or they're faded or buttons are missing or whatever. So there's only going to be so many of them. Um, so I was looking more as like an investment. And I was thinking, well, this guy just got an entire Atari thing and like a bunch of games and controllers for five bucks. These are probably like a dollar a piece or something, right? So I asked and at this yard sale, he was having a call about every single thing. Like he didn't know prices on anything. I guess he was selling for other people. So he was having to call different people for every item. And he called a lady and she was like $5 a piece. <laughs> and I just, like, I just didn't even like consider it at that time because like it's, Five dollars versus a dollar is a pretty big discrepancy. And if I'd wanted to actually buy them all, like there's probably like, I would say eight to 10 laying there. Like I would end up just spending my entire budget on these shirts that are more of an investment than they are like more of a, not a long-term, but like not a, an immediate return on my investment. Um, And then he was like, or you can make an offer. But in my head, like, I didn't really want to pay more than $2 a piece. And $2 versus $5 is a big thing. And I probably could have said, how about $20 for all of them? But there was just something about it that just, like, it didn't necessarily rub me the wrong way. It just was one of those, like, I don't know, maybe I'm hormonal or something. Liberty. No, ma'am. I know you need my constant and immediate attention, but you can go find another plush to get. You don't need the one that you threw under the table. Um, but I did end up getting, which I, I honestly overpaid for these two, because he had to call a whole nother person, and it was one of those make an offer. And at that point, I was like, I'm not going to sit here and argue. Um, I got these swans. And the set of them will only sell for like $10. But they're, you know, they're not going to break. And they're small. Um, give me a second. So my dog throws her plushes. Like literally throws them around. But she can also, has this uncanny ability to sniff specific plushes out. <laughs> without even being able to see them and once she decides that she wants one that's jammed under something she will not quit until I get it for her um so I got the two little swans and then I got this oh lord it's a Steve Austin 316 sippy cup stone cold I need to dry erase it and wipe it down um I think it's like 1998 1998 or something only gonna go for about 10 bucks at most but again not really gonna break in the mail kind of cool kind of fun to have in my store you know draws attention <sighs> and they're out in the middle of the nowhere trying to make money so I bought those two things and I end up just offering four bucks not the best <laughs> investment um, but at the time also I didn't know what these are worth I was thinking maybe I could get 20 for the Steve Austin uh, but no, that is not the case. Uh, so I left that one and I'd seen a sign for another one. And this is where I start driving around looking for this yard sale. And it's like, there's just one sign on the main road and I cannot find this yard sale. And I'm like, oh my God, can y'all please just have a path, one path so that I can catch a sign and figure out where I'm going. I started to give up. I went back out to the main road and I drove like almost another mile down the main road. And I saw another sign for the same cell. 
in a different place, like a mile down the road from the main road. So they had put them like at two different very opposite windy roads that lead back into the middle of nowhere. But the one, the second one I found was actually closer. So that, that one actually, I almost got lost again, but I ended up catching another sign. And so once I caught that sign, then it was just like maybe a quarter of a mile down the road. So luckily I found that one <laughs> because I was starting to get pretty irritated. But that one was also a good sale. Um, I found several 90s things, which is always happy. I did get this St. Louis, I think it's 1997. Um, it's a Toldex cotton. Uh, it's got a little bit of fading here, but it's got this raised gold, flashy, like, writing and logo on here. They had another one, like a 1998 vintage St. Louis one. Uh, but I ended up not getting that one because it was pretty generic. Most t-shirts like this are going to go for like $15 to $20. And so I didn't get that one. But this one has a very unique graphic that, and the graphic itself is in excellent condition. So, and it's also pre-shrunk. Um, they started doing the pre-shrunk thing sort of towards the late 90s. And the pre-shrunk ones tend to not have that weird shape that some of the 90s t-shirts would get. So I went ahead and got this one for $2. I'm probably going to list this one around $24. Just because it's a little flashier and interesting than some of the other ones. Then I was super excited about these. I found two vintage 90s Halloween t-shirts. And this, it's not all over graphics, but it's like got that sort of all over the front graphic and it's a good size this I can definitely list as rave wear because it's got these this color scheme uh, but also just a Halloween t-shirt vintage tag um, and it, it's you know it's in good condition the graphics are good and I got that one for a dollar I'm probably gonna list this for like 34 or so just because the graphics are so interesting uh, I also got this other vintage Halloween shirt, and this one's kind of cool. Like, the size tag is not in there, but I can do measurements. It's probably like a extra large, men's extra large. But, like, in the teeth, which already the jack-o'-lantern is very 90s, like very retro Halloween. But it's like a raised graphic, and within the graphic there's these like gel skeletons and crossbones so it's got kind of like a cool layered thing um and it's got like a shimmery effect so I'm probably gonna list that one about 30 34 dollars and just let them sit there through fall um I did pick up this it's not particularly worth a lot but the Hollister some of the surf stuff does pretty well and it's summer and it's got that sort of barefoot logo. Um, but it was only a dollar. So I'm probably going to list that one somewhere around 15 or 16 Then I got these super cool uh, vintage duck head striped shorts. Probably like 1991 um, These were a dollar. Very nice condition. I don't see any staining and like the material's not worn down or faded. Uh, I'll probably list these somewhere around the $25 mark. Then I got super excited because I found an orange tab Levi jean shorts. Now these aren't, some of them, some of the orange tabs go for like $200. Shorts tend to go for a little bit less than the jeans and particular styles go for more. They were only $2, but these are actually in pretty nice condition. Like, they're not heavily faded, and they're not heavily worn. And even, like, the back tag here looks like it was barely worn. Like, literally barely. Like, maybe washed once. But it does have the orange tab. I'll probably list these somewhere around 35 to 40 um, And I think they're size 34, which is a decent size. 
pretty good size actually. That 34 or 36 is kind of like a Goldilocks zone. Um, then I found these PF Flyers, which PF Flyers, not the original PF Flyers. Original PF Flyers do really well. Um, but these are like the remakes. Uh, they were doing super good. They're not doing as good as they were, but they still are consistent sellers. Um, and these are the Ridge, Ridge, Ridge Wedge galvanized or vulcanized or whatever galvanized i need to take a dry eraser to them um to the soles and that'll clean up pretty easy these are actually pretty easy to get with a dry eraser otherwise the canvas is in pretty good condition um i didn't even look at the size but they're a bigger mint size so <laughs> mint's 12 so that's a good size that's pretty ideal um 11 12 is good for men's really you can do other sizes but that's kind of like the more consistent sellers um and the insoles are in really good condition the soles are in pretty good condition they got a little bit of you know dirt but they're not like worn uh so i should be able to get about 30 35 dollars for these and i paid three so that ended up sort of Making me feel a little bit better. I love finding vintage 90s clothing. Um, but that was also telling. Because even after finding or Orange Tab Levi's and PF Flyers and vintage 90s shirts. I still was not really in the mood. And that was about the point where I was like. Alright Sarah you're. You're struggling. You need a day off. Um, so. From there. I started driving down the road sort of aimlessly. Wait, no, I did stop. Oh, I stopped at one place right before that, actually. Because I was trying to outpace the other reseller that had gotten the Atari stuff. And I did find, which I, I don't say I overpaid. I did find this uh, Bob and Larry Christmas snow globe. And I did check. It's not gunky or anything. Um... But it was $5, not the best deal. But VeggieTales is steadily sort of coming back. Because it was one of those more obscure things. And with the sort of resurgence of like Jesus teas and things like that. Some of the VeggieTales and that kind of thing is also getting more notoriety. So I got this thinking by Christmas the value of this might go up a little bit. Right now it's sitting at about $30, which is decent. I mean, five into thirty is all right. Uh, you just have to remember, like, your fees, expenses, taxes, all of that. You're not making a whole lot. But it is in its original box. It's already got the foam, you know, so really there's, like, I'll probably pack another piece of paper in here just so there's not that shifting. Wrap it with some bubble wrap, put it in another box, and it'll be good to go. So there's some upsides to dealing with it. Um, but I did pick that up. Now, fast forward again to the 90s yard sale. After there, I left and started driving sort of down a road. I was like, maybe I'll happen upon some random estate sale or something. And it'll just really lift my mood. I did not. But I did find a house that said indoor yard sale. And it had like a giant flag coming out of it. And I was thinking, all right, yeah, they probably do this like once a month or on a regular basis or something so it might be overpriced but I decided I would turn around and go back and this sort of like just added to my mood there was no place to turn around like you can't easily turn around on roads out here like even going into somebody's driveway one they might shoot you but two it's dangerous because most of them are like gravel or they're dipped or they're not easy to get in and out of and then people, the, the speed limit on the back roads, even though there, there's lots of hills and curves and everything, is usually 50 to 55 miles per hour. So you can't see in people's speed on top of that. So they're going 60, 65 miles an hour. You can't see if someone's coming. So you can't pull into somebody's long driveway. You definitely can't go turn around in their yard. You're going to, if you do that, you're going to have to back out and hope that somebody doesn't just ram you off the side of the road. 
So you can't really do that. You have to find like a church parking lot or something like that to turn around in. And it took me four miles. I had to drive four miles down this windy road just to find a place that was safe to turn around. And I almost didn't turn around and go back. But I was like, you know what? You never know. And then if they do this on a regular basis and prices are fair, this could be a place where I could go and pick items every once in a while. But I am glad I went there because her prices were more than reasonable. Um, and she also like, she had like a uh, prosthetic legs and you could tell they were just setting it up. They do, she said they do it like every other weekend is what they're trying to do. Um, so they definitely are just trying to like boost their income a little bit, you know, um, basically they have a whole, that whole extra little house that's run down on their property. So they're just using it to sort of sell what they can. Um, and I don't know if they do storage auctions or how they acquire their findings. Maybe there's a lot of auction houses around here, which I'll take y'all to at some point, but, um, one, I was glad I went just because obviously they're hustling. They're trying to make some money. Um, but she was also very reasonably priced. So it benefited both of us. Um, but at that one, I found some really random stuff. Stuff I normally wouldn't buy. Now is the time I am going to start accumulating Christmas. From now all the way up until probably November, like early November. And then I'll start to pull back because I want to sell off everything I've accumulated. I don't tend to buy Christmas, you know, three weeks before Christmas. Like I don't, that's not a good strategy for me. Um, I've learned, but I do buy it over the summer because less people are looking for it. Which means I'm more likely to find it and I'm more likely to find quality Christmas. And also, because it's hot outside and summery, when people are selling it, they're more likely to give it to you at a lower price because they're not thinking about it being Christmas. Like, they're opposite end of Christmas. <laughs> so they're more likely, something that they would give you for $2 closer to Christmas, they might charge you for or $5 for. But this is the Bradford Exchange Nativity peace, hope, and love lighted ornament set. And it is, they are like still twisted in their twisty bags. Like these haven't been used. And it doesn't have the original box, but it has the certificate of authenticity and the original foam. And this whole set was only $2. Right now, I could sell this for somewhere in the realm of like 30, 25 to 30. But if I wait two and a half, three months to list it, I could probably list it closer to 40, maybe even 45. And I will probably get that um, before Christmas. So that's two Christmas items that I'm going to end up putting back for Christmas time. I also got this really random thing and I wouldn't have gotten it except it was 50 cents. And it was intriguing. So it is the Newton floating photo cube that you can put photos in and it'll sort of hover here. Some of these sort of sci-fi tech gadgets that started coming out in the like late 90s and stuff are starting to become kind of collectible because we've progressed so far in technology now that it's kind of like history, <laughs> like landing on the moon or something. Um, but also Gen Z, they like their photographs because we went from like having photographs and frames and decorating with photographs and taking, you know, Polaroids and all that to just doing everything on our phones. And that's what they grew up with is like everything was on their phone. And the idea of just having photos displayed or in their possessions, a lot of them will make big collage collages out of it. Um, or taking, even taking real photographs. They like that sort of thing, which I get because it's like something they didn't get to experience. And if you look back at it, when we were like preteens and teens, it was new to us and we thought it was amazing. And then we just kind of got to where we do it on our phone. 
But anyway, so some of these are starting to gain a little bit of value. It looks like I can probably get like $15 to $20 for this. Um, I'm pretty sure it's new in package because it's like tight in there. Um, I'll have to check it out, but I'm pretty sure it's new in package. But for $0.50, cents, especially with it being so easy to ship, that was a good deal. I bought this little thing for myself because she made, you could tell she made some sort of like, either her or the other person that was out mowing the yard. They make like leather, burned leather things and burned wood things. And some of them were pretty cool. They're pretty rudimentary in nature. But I really like this cover wagon and I just wanted to kind of support what they were doing. Um, but I'm going to put this on my keychain. But it is all leather. Like it's made out of leather and then it's like burned. The little cover wagon is burned into it. Uh, then I got, let's see, there's eight of these like 1950s, like mid-century chrome. You would see them on like cabinet doors and those like enameled uh, pieces, like kitchen pieces. Um, I need to wipe them down. This, the lot of eight will probably go somewhere between $25 and $30, so not crazy, crazy money, but it was two bucks for all of them. Um, and they're super cool. I love 1940s, 1950s, like restaurant wear, diner stuff, all the chrome and colors and mint green and all that. I absolutely love it. Um, and then, oh, then I found some Zippos and they are new in package. This, uh, the, two of these are the, I think they're called standard street chrome, regular street chrome, 207. Two of them are blank. They were $2 each. These don't go for super high money. Some Zippos go really well. Back during the pandemic, I got onto this kind of almost like when live auctions really took off was during the pandemic. And I got onto a Facebook live auction and she was selling like camel, Zippo, camel, uh, cigarette Zippos, motorcycle themed Zippos. I can't even remember all of them, but they were going like between five and eight a piece. And I bought like 40 of those and I made a killing on those during the, the pandemic. Um, these will only go for maybe about 20 bucks each. But again, super easy to deal with. Now this one is a, one of the Destination series. And it is for San Francisco. San Francisco Bay. It was also only $2. And it is new. Um, well, maybe it might be used. Either way. They go for like $25 to $40. If it is used, which I think it might be, because most of the time if they're new, they'll have a sealed sticker here on the back. So I'm probably going to list that as used just because I don't want to mislead someone. But even used, probably like $25, $30. Bucks. Um, super cool. I get excited when I find good zippo Zippos, and that was only $2. So. I think that was everything from her. So then, headed back into town. At that point, I was kind of over it. I didn't want to get lost again. I didn't want to have to go searching for another yard sale. There ended up apparently being another one right down the road before I turned off to head home. I got home and saw it on, on Facebook, actually. It was like one of the only things that's ever been posted on the local yard sale page. I was like, of course. But I ended up coming home. But first, I stopped at the Goodwill. Oh no, I got this from that lady too. This is a Whirly and it's Coca-Cola. Not super special, but it does have glitter. Like the glitter plastic. So I think I could probably get maybe 15 to 20-ish on that. 15 to 18. Um, but I stopped at the Goodwill on the way home and I got... Like, their silverware is four for a dollar. It's like, 
something stupid. It's either like 99 cents a piece or four for a dollar. I can't remember. It's something silly like that. But I did find this Oneida. This. This. Distinction Deluxe Stainless. I don't know why I couldn't say that all of a sudden. This is the Capri pattern. It's got sort of like little flowers, like very mid-century 70s style. And I got, it's a very, it's mixed match. Some forks, some random sides, different size spoons. It does have a serving spoon, which helps. Um, actually, this looks like some type of serving spoon too. Because it's bigger than the other big spoon. Maybe it's a big spoon. I don't know. Um, but I should be able to get about 28 to 30 for this mixed set of eight. So for two bucks, that's pretty good. Um, hmm. There was another picker who showed up like right after I did and started looking around at things and he sort of squeezed in front of me and then I noticed on the back end of one of the ladies carts like her goodwill cart that she was putting items out was this 90s Godzilla and even though the movie in the 90s the movie Godzilla in the 90s did not go over so well it has become sort of a cult classic. And the toys they made for that movie were over the top. <laughs> like, they're quite deluxe. Um, he was only, like, I kind of wedged myself back around the reseller and then just picked this up off the cart and walked away. You could see his eyes get big. Um, but I think it is 19... 98 yeah Toho 1998 1998 um but he goes pretty consistently for 40 40 45 dollars I do need to put a new battery in them and test them but the battery compartment looks really good so I'm sure he works he just needs to buy a new battery um but if for some reason even if he didn't work he would probably still go for about 20 or so. So that was a cool find. Godzilla. Um, I'm trying to make sure. The last thing was just to try to give me some sort of endorphins. And it was such a ridiculous purchase, honestly. But it was this mixed bag of vintage, like, magnets. Another thing Gen Z likes is magnets. They like a lot of the things that we took for granted, honestly. Um, but I sort I did go through these and sorted them out because I was I wasn't even sure if I was gonna make a haul video. I was in such a mood, I was like, they don't need to see my haul. Um, but I came back around. But I did kind of sort them out, and so I am gonna do a small lot probably for only like seven to ten dollars depending on what I find of these sort of like more humorous like there's a Bob Ross that says just chill um oh lord life is too short to be nice to shitty people and then there's Willie Nelson marijuana won't kill you unless you let a bale of it fall on you and then you got some like cats get your smile on uh, a cat who wrecked the toilet paper in my defense. I was left unsupervised. I'm going to put those together. Probably like 7 to $10. Nothing crazy. And then I got a huge assortment of like travel magnets. Like all kinds of different travel magnets. Um, I can't remember how many there are. There's like I think close to 30, like 26 or something like that. I'm going to put those in a lot together for probably like 20 bucks. Um, and then I got a few I'll probably list by themselves. This is a, a raised like vintage Disney. Um, a King's Island. 
we got this Aries made in USA. Mm, these are some of the travel ones. I'm not going to mess with those. We got this vintage New York City. We got this little like clay Arizona with the spiral. A Cancer. Like the squirt the zodiac. Then we got a natural tunnel state park that has a train on it, so that would probably be alright. We got a vintage Cabela's and a vintage Garfield. I think that's all the ones I was gonna do on their own. The rest of these are all going in a lot of vintage travel magnets. So these will probably only go up before like between like four and eight dollars. Magnets are not huge sellers, um, but they don't take a lot to ship or anything. Um, and then I can do them relatively list them relatively quickly. So, I don't know, I would say we probably have at least $50 in magnets here, and I spent $5 on the bag. So it's not the worst purchase, but I think it was definitely like an impulse buy to just try to like get me in a better state of mind. Um, so yeah, all together, I spent right at $50. And when I, I did value it all out, because again, I wasn't sure if I'd make a haul video, um, it was at like 640 was the estimated value. And I do tend to value my items, unless I'm sort of projecting into the future for the next few months, and I might list them like 2 to $6 higher than normal. The rest, I do tend to value them slightly on the lower end. So... I would say 600 is a very reasonable amount for what we have. So 50 and a 600 is very respectable. It's still like a number where I'm like, meh, it's cool, but was it worth it? Um, but yeah, so I'm going to take some days. I'm going to list the rest of tonight. I'm going to go take an Epsom salt bath. I'm going to make me a big cup of coffee. I'm going to put on some soothing podcast or something, ambient noise, and I'm going to list some items tonight. I'm going to, for the most part, stay home. There's a couple of things I got to go do tomorrow, but I'm probably not going to go to Goodwill. I just, I don't even want to walk in there right now. Like, even the music's annoying me at this point. Um, there's not going to be yard sales. It's Mother's Day, um, so I'll probably just run my errands and then list the rest of the day very casually. I also need to edit some videos and get those posted. And then Monday and Tuesday it's supposed to rain, so I'm probably going to do a good bit of the same. But I do have a lot of content to post, so y'all will get to see. There's several places that I've been and picked up items. There's several haul videos that I've been that y'all haven't seen yet. This will probably be at the very end of all of those. So by the time you get here, you will have seen the others. But that will give me a little, a little time to regroup. Get some things listed, keep my momentum going, keep my sales building, get my videos caught up, and just stay away from people. Because I think that's what I need to do for a few days. But yeah, I'm going to get off here. I'm going to go run me a bath. I'm going to make me a cup of coffee. And I'm going to list... And I hope you'll have a good rest of the weekend to all the mothers. You're going to see this after Mother's Day, but happy mother. Oh, by the way, the squirrel, my parents did. They're in, they're at Hope Lodge in, well, Sarah Cannon Hospital, but also Hope Lodge in Nashville where my mom's getting her treatment. But they did send me this beautiful arrangement of Mother's Day flowers, which has been a hot, hot minute since I've gotten flowers. So, this was welcoming welcoming me when I got home, which was very nice. Um, so, 
I have that sitting in my workspace. Oh, and by the way, when I get off here, actually, I'm not going to show you because at this point, y'all have probably already clicked off and stopped watching. I'll put it on the next video. On top of everything else I did, I did clear off in another tire shelving unit that's bigger than this one on the other side of the garage and rearranged some things to make room and then took all of my toys and my shoe bin and some other things over there. So I got some weightlifting in and I did it in the span of like two hours. It was absolutely nuts. But I freed up a lot of room. It doesn't look like that right now because I just brought this haul in and I got some things I need to process here. But once I get these processed, I'm actually going to have like room for like two more bins down here, room for two more bins up here, got room over here, and then over there I got room for probably like eight to ten bins. So I'm looking pretty good on my storage space. So once I get some more things listed and I get some more things organized, I'll spend another day probably towards the end of next week clearing off another shelving unit and then I'll be golden. Like I'll have plenty of storage space for what my current goals are. Anyway, good night. Happy Mother's Day.